we're going to have Mr. Stephen Ashcroft, who is the Associate Director of Procurement Advisory, DPSA, in the UAE. Uh, Mr. Ashcroft, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, the third speaker, and the lights are dim. You've already had two, and now a third one. So uh, a key quality of my presentation is that it's going to be short. I think that's probably the best thing we can say. But in terms of uh, sustainable procurement in healthcare, what I, what I wanted to do, as Sonny has made reference there, was, uh, was to try to think of the audience we've got today and what you can take away that you could actually be actionable in your own organization. So uh, what I wanted to do is talk you through five steps um, to introduce sustainable procurement and then perhaps uh, one action that you can take away. Um, before I do that, let me, let me just give you some background. Um, let's go back. Um, great, got the technology out of the way. I think, I think also something I'd like to do is that, as uh, Sonny said, oh, if anybody's got any questions at the end, I think what would be useful if, uh, it, if we could try and be interactive in that regard. So if you've got any comments or observations as I go through, I'm quite happy to stop and uh, let, let's see if you can add value to the discussion. Um, so some background first. Uh, DPSA, uh, Developing Procurement Services for Aid. Um, we've got a, uh, we started in April this year, based in, here in Dubai. And what we're doing is uh, putting a, a range of procurement specialists together in order to help uh, developing countries. And the, the work that we've done so far is position ourselves as uh, doing procurement differently. Now, one of those procurement differently, of course, is considering the triple constraints around scope, cost, and delivery. So in terms of doing it differently, what we might want to say is we're, we're working within those triple constraints. And, and so far, we've said, well, it's customer-led. Aladdin made reference there to uh, some of the prefabricated uh, modules. I want to touch on that as well. Um, I thought I was terrifically proud of this until Aladdin did his piece, and it's on a, on a completely massive scale. But if you think that we're working in uh, healthcare environments in Africa, turn up with a container, five minutes, uh, we've got a, a type one, type two hospital in place. So that's the kind of work we're involved in. Um, and in terms of our offering, well, I suppose, first of all, it's in uh, four areas. First of all, it's uh, in advisory services. Because it's procurement, we're also interested in uh, the logistics aspect. Frankly, we get involved in audit and assurance as well, particularly in developing countries. And then the fourth element there is professional development. It's trying to transfer knowledge, transfer skills within the customer base. And, and in terms of who are we to do that? Well, ACOM is a, a massive organization, many countries around the world, a lot of talent that we're able to call on to deliver. In terms of the categories, uh, obviously healthcare is a, a major one, particularly around pharmaceuticals, uh, contraception would be an area, but also malaria tablets on a very pedestrian level. You know, we're certainly one of the largest buyers of, of those kind of pharmaceuticals right, right through the developing world. So, let, let's get back to sustainable procurement. And perhaps, first of all, is a, is a provocation. Uh, what, I, what I might want to say is that when it comes to sustainable procurement, as I was considering the audience here, I was mindful that perhaps sustainable procurement, whether it's beach balls or solar panels or healthcare, it's still solar, it's still something that we're particularly interested in to say, how does that differ within healthcare? So I think this idea of uh, sustainable procurement, and again, following Aladdin is quite an experience, is to recognize that we might be referring to something called sustainable procurement today, but actually, in a few years' time, it will just be called procurement. The whole concept of saying it's sustainable is just something that's got to be built into the business case. So what, I, what I'm perhaps interested in, first of all, is considering the journey as your organization moves towards sustainable procurement. And perhaps what we'll want to do, first of all, is start off with Simon Sinek. I don't know if you've come across him, but it's a brilliant insight. It only came in 2010, and why I didn't think of it first, I don't know. But part of it, really, is to say, do we know why we want to do sustainability? Do we actually have some 
big reason, some vision, something that we're particularly interested in achieving. So I think that in terms of figuring out what is important to you about sustainability. Now that, that, that might be, first of all, something to do with marketing, to position yourselves well. Perhaps that might be a cynical view, but you may have heard of the phrase greenwashing in that regard. So there seems to be a lot of care and consideration in this area. Maybe that's not your organisation. Maybe you actually want to do things properly. I commend you for that. That's what I'm particularly interested in. Competency. So we're, 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 we're recognising, again, those of you in procurement, we don't like to tell people outside of procurement, but frankly, it's a process. The process of procurement is rather pedestrian, but the particular skills and knowledge you need are around the commercial, contractual, financial, technical aspects. That's where the skill is. And trying to figure out how do we align your staff so they've got the right skills and knowledge to apply sustainable procurement, that's the particular challenge. So I'm back to step one, the leader. We definitely need the leaders to support it. Thirdly, I, th I think the, uh, the area here is I put risks. And as I was putting the slides together, I should, perhaps I should put brackets and opportunities. But let's not be positive. We're always business people, so we have to look on the downside first of all. But in terms of risks, what I'm interested in there, I'm using the example of solar panels, come with batteries, massive batteries. At the end of the life of the batteries, where do the batteries go? Oh, well, we chose solar panels because we didn't want to go diesel generators because it was bad for the environment. And now we've got these batteries we need to dispose of. So in terms of trying to consider sustainable procurement, we might consider life cycle costs. That might be something we're particularly interested in. In terms of the risks as well, I think what we, we, we might look at are not just financial ones, but also this area of corporate social responsibility. So let's not name names, but I think we could all give the examples where many of the supply chains of large organisations have been proven to be less vigilant in the way in which they're man managing their sustainability issues. So I think there is something to be addressed to recognise that your corporate brand the reputation you have in the market can be materially damaged by your supply chain not being sustainable. Fourth one. I've talked here about stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Well, perhaps they're internal, other functions you might be interested in. But a key stakeholder I'm interested in is customers and also suppliers through the supply chain. A criticism of procurement is that suppliers say procurement does not listen. Procurement does not listen to their innovative offers. And I'm again with Aladdin, who was uh, terrifically impressed with what he said. We don't want 100% innovation. Innovation actually might be about paying on time, never mind anything particularly 3D printing or anything dramatic like that. But in terms of the stakeholders, it's trying to understand what they're interested in. For example, if we take UAE, what we might be interested in is looking at local supply chains. That might be an area of sustainability that we're interested in. Something about trying to keep it within the local economy. As long as there are a business case for it, I'd be supportive. But the issue is, let's listen to the stakeholders. Let's try and act on the information they provide to us. In saying what percentage of contracts are awarded on that basis, rather than just purchase price. Now, in terms of what's the right number, I haven't got the right number for you. But what I'd like you to do is to measure it now. Where are we currently? If it's zero, I'm not so sure we're happy. If it's 100%, I think you're over-engineering this. So let's try and get a number and see what the organisation's comfortable with. Second one, is there any criteria associated with sustainability within your contracts? Or are we bothered about meeting the regulatory requirements on environmental matters, on social benefits that we might be particularly interested in? Uh, if there isn't any sustainable, sustainable criteria, fine, that's, that's OK. Why don't you listen to the suppliers? Let's hear what the supply market's got to say. What are they doing with other customers? What can we do to introduce them into your organization? Third one. But back to this one about the, the staff having the knowledge and the skills to address the sustainable procurement. Procurement uh, may be a, an area that is subject to a great deal of skills around uh, skills development around ethics, anti-corruption and so on, there's also the opportunity for sustainable procurement. For the avoidance of misunderstanding, I'm not selling our services here, I'm, I'm giving you the examples. But I see that, that has been a key one. 
And if we're going to be um, training our staff around sustainable procurement, let's make sure that we're measuring their performance against that criteria as well. Let's have a look at some operational measures, uh, some delivery. We, we might be interested in considering the delivery aspects as well. So I thought, first of all, was, are we measuring waste sent to landfill? So we, we might have a position where we say, well, we know actually how much is going so far. Have we got a trend down? Are we looking to reduce the amount of waste we're sending to landfill? Over what period of time? How are we going to do it? What are the enablers? I might be interested in those areas. Secondly, carbon emissions. Are we measuring our footprint? Are we measuring our, our approach to dealing with carbon emissions? And here are hard, tangible issues that, curiously enough, can lead into financial benefits. I think a good example of that is water usage. Okay, so if we can get water usage down, that's going to have a financial impact as well as an environmental impact. I think recycled content, perhaps more aspirational in that regard, but we'd be interested to know what percentage of recycled goods and services are being used. It might be an area to explore by asking your suppliers in the first instance. And again, I'm a great believer that none of us knows more than all of us. Ask the suppliers. Let's try to understand what else they're doing out in the market. ISO 20400. Uh, ISO an uh, in international standards organization supported by 168 national bodies around the world. This, this is an organization that, that is looking to enable organizations to improve their standards. And why should you be interested in ISO 20,400? 20, well, I suppose, first of all, as we've been illustrated by talks today and yesterday, we're not sure of standards, are we? We're not sure of initiatives around sustainability. So what we're interested in here is trying to think of ourselves as the healthcare community rather than just you as the organisation to say, is there a credible benchmark that we can use? Is there an approach that we can say that is one standard that applies to all of us through the verticals? I think, I think that would be particularly useful. And who will benefit in that regard? Well, you'll benefit, it's fair to say, but in terms of trying to put an integrated supply chain together right through the healthcare vertical, if we're going to use the ISO standard as a benchmark, a platform, a means of discussion, a forum of debate, that strikes me as a good approach. And again, for the avoidance of misunderstanding, I have no commercial links with ISO. It's, uh, that's not my, my purpose here. So what I, what I was interested in, really, was to say that if we approach ISO 20,400, we can actually demonstrate good practice. So instead of another badge, uh, another initiative, another press release about how well we're doing around corporate social responsibility, if we're actually abiding by an international standard, maybe that's something that reflects very well on you and your organization. And we can be very positive about that in terms of saying, who does it attract the talent? Who does it attract your suppliers? Who does it attract from the customer base as well? Second one. I think an area I'm interested in here is I'm dealing with the, the, the fact that there is seen to be much conflicting advice. I'm sorry I keep talking about Aladdin. I was a great promoter of BIM. I thought BIM was a great idea. I may have a quiet reflection after Aladdin's, Aladdin's deconstructing that approach. But what I'm interested in is setting some guidelines that all organizations within healthcare can apply themselves. So rather than just promoting something that's your model or something that you've been picked up from the latest consultant, let's try and have it an approach that everyone in the community is able to apply. And what, what I see as a, as a positive there is that it can go right through the supply chain, contractors, suppliers, and buyers themselves. It's something that everybody can apply. What about this one? So we, 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 we might recognize then that procurement might be able to move out of being this function that is often seen as separate from the organization. So we might have something that aligns with the business imperatives, but also aligns more with your business community as well. So I see that as being a positive initiative. And it builds very much on corporate social responsibilities. So, in summary, ISO 20,400, 
emergent management practices, a useful tool to help us get from A to B, something that will provide us with good guidance. Secondly, and I think this is an important one, it's differentiating you and your organisation from the myriad of initiatives that are taken around sustainability. So what we can do is, rather than it be window dressing or greenwashing, we might be able to say that it's actually based on something that is factual, robust and resilient. Finally, if what we can do, and we have you as an early adopter in this regard, we can then say that that approach will develop through the healthcare community, right through the supply chain, and there's a standard that we're able to apply right through the community. So we're hopefully going to consume fewer resources, we're going to use less energy, we're going to generate less waste, promote social benefits, I would see that as a, as a positive, reduce harm to the environment and people, I would see that as something important. But I think, again, I was born pre-internet, I grew up pre-internet, and I think when it comes to the idea of sustainable procurement, it's actually arrived now, it's just not evenly distributed. Make sure you're the one who's involved. Thank you.